Okay, my name is Helena Hertuainen I'm, and I'm of Finnish Forest Center. I'm from, I'm regional director from, from Western Service Area. And uh, my colleague, Maria Mustola is here also. She's a project manager at Rikkare School Project. And we did this presentation together. And our topic is advisory, advisory services based on the targets of forest owners. And uh, first, few words about Finnish Forest Centre. Uh, Finnish Forest Centre is a state-funded organization covering the whole Finland. Uh, and our task is to promote forestry and related livelihoods, advising forest owners how to uh, uh, care, take care of the forest and um, benefit from them. Uh, we are collecting and sharing uh, forest data related to Finnish forest and forest owners, and we are enforcing forest legislation. And then a few words about Finnish forest owners. The average age of Finnish forest owner is 62 years. Half of the Finnish, half of the owners are older than 65 years. The share of farmers has diminished clearly, and the proportion of employees has increased rapidly during the last decade. More than half of the owners live in the rural countryside, but only every third of the forest, uh, uh, only every third on the forest holding, on their forest holdings. Uh, so the urbanization has been quite slow. Uh, forest owners are clearly more educated than before and 41% of forest owners are women. And here you can see, see the, uh, 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 the, um, the shares of the forest ownership in Finland. 60% of uh, forests are owned by private people and 26% of forests are state owned and 9% uh, is companies owned and 5% others like communities. And uh, although 60% of uh, forest is private, uh, private people owned, but the uh, forest growth, uh, the amount is 70% and the timber for industry, industry it's, it's, it's 80% of the whole uh, amount. And now I tell you something about how we advise forest owners in Finnish forest centers and what kind of ideas we have for future. Uh, we are actively uh, contacting uh, certain forest owner groups. And now our groups are new forest owners, uh, forest owners who have a lot of forest management potential, and forest owners who have potential for environmental support for biodiversity conservation. And our forest advisors contact forest owners different ways, mostly by phone, but also by emails, teams meetings, or meetings in the forest at, at, the, at the forest area or at the uh, Finnish Forest Center offices. We contact about 8,000 forest owners last year. Last year, and also we have uh, we have a customer service so that so that forest owners can contact us, and uh, these these advice service services are available for everyone. Uh, last year, no, about 19,000 forest owners called to contacted to Finnish Forest Center, and we have this uh, uh, website. Uh, Metsan Pistafi means to, to your own forest, that fee website, uh, which, which forest advisors use when, when servicing forest owners to provide personal service of their own forest. And um, from this uh, website, all forest known owners get basic information about their own forest by logging into, into that web service is free of charge for them. And for example, you can get an overview of their own forest, see forest management, 
and failing recommendations. Uh, you can see the nature sites in the, for, in, in the forest. Uh, you can receive diverse in, environmental information at the, at the map level. And you can share information about the forest with the operators you want to want to operate or, or, or contact with. And our service and our advisory to forest owners is based on the forest owners' own, own targets. And advisors discuss with the forest owners of the targets and get advisory based on that. And uh, the, the point is that forest owners make their own decisions. Uh, and we think that all services to forest owners should be accessible to everyone. Uh, we have a new website, um, uh, and they are made as accessible as we can. Uh, services, uh, we have also services to people who don't use internet. We have information and service both in Finnish and Swedish. Uh, and we have services for distant forest owners. And also we have advisories at, at, at the local level for, for local knowledge about the forests. And uh, we have monitored how we success and how effective we are at, at this work. Uh, we have monitored forest owner satisfaction of the advisory services and the, and the NPS rate is 70.2 and that is quite high that that tells us that uh, forest owners are, 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 are pleased with the advisory they get from us and we are also monitoring the ac actions after the advisory uh, uh, we are monitoring are they making a, a notification of forest use. Uh, that means uh, you have to do this uh, notification before you do commercial uh, use of forests. 11% uh, does, does that. There's a, a quite lot of variation uh, uh, in, between advisors and, and between regions. In, in Western Finland, we have really uh, put effort on that and that, that's almost like 30%. Do they use finance for sustainable forestry? That, that's funding uh, 30, 13% uh, do that after our advisory and uh, do the forest owner log into that uh, and website and 55% uh, do that after our advisory. And we are continuously developing our service based on the feedback we get. And uh, our advisors are quite well introduced to their work by experienced advisors. We are peer learning, sharing good experiences and practices in our, our Western group and also in, in through whole Finland. Uh, we have also courses for forest owners. Uh, like the example, basic courses for forest owners, forest management, protection, protecting biodiversity, like climate change and foresty, road management, taxation, and passing the forest properties to next generation. And last year we had 333 courses and uh, more than 11,000 participants, and the NPS rate was 67. And last year we had this fast chance from classroom courses, uh, from class classroom courses and field trips to webinars, obviously because of Corona. Uh, and uh, traditionally we have our participants have been very typical forest owners on that classroom uh, courses and, and and field trips. They have been mostly male, sixties, and from rural areas. But now when we are using webinars, uh, now we very reach wider scale of forest owners. We get more participants per course, but the NPS level has been the same good level. I think the webinars are here to stay, but there's also need for field trips when we are, when we are talking about forests. And also we have materials and, and videos for surf learning in our, our website and that's, that's that's not time related, you can do it whenever you want. 
Uh, then I tell you about this case, female forest owners. Uh, we have been uh, uh, have been organizing uh, courses only for women, time to time. For example, basic courses for forest owners, or or clearing forest sands, or planting trees. And why we have been doing that? Because uh, we know that women haven't been very actively participating the traditional forest owner courses. The, most of the participants have have been like male and 60s, and, and we have been focusing sometimes on, on, on female, on, on women on these courses. And, and the feedback has been very good. Uh, uh, women said it's easy to participate. Those courses are very popular and uh, the women forest owners are, are motivated and very active participants. Well, then are we focusing on women now? Uh, the answer is no. Uh, the gender is not the best. I really think that gender is not the best way to segment forest owners. There are more justified ways to segment forest owners, like new forest owners, distant forest owners, on the specific area, forest owners with the large, large properties of forests, like management potential or biodiversity potential. Uh, owing a certain type of forest, for example, in Finland, Vietland, forest is a quite big issue or our herbivores, forest habitats and so on. And we have had also cases, we have uh, trying to have EU fund for female, for courses only for women, and we didn't get any fun funding because they thought it's not equal, because it's, uh, well, it's, it was focused only on women. And now a few words about the future. Mm. Uh, we are now actively collecting information of the forest owners. Uh, we have a lot of data, for example, age and gender, hometown and information of forest properties, uh, how they have used the forest uh, or, or, have, or, or actions in the forest, have they used environmental support or management support. And our aim is to offer customized services by developing and designing the services according to targets of the forest owners. We know that forest owners have different targets, but, but we are trying to find out uh, their targets and, and uh, be more aware, aware of them. We have had uh, one year this CRM customer relationship management, uh, and it gives us new ways and new potential to contact forest owners. Now we are just, just on, the, on the beginning of the path, uh, how, to, how to use the whole potential of the C CRM. Uh, yeah, I think we, we, uh, we are going towards, towards automatic advisory based on the information of forest owner, owners and the, uh, their use of forest. For example, uh, if there's a regeneration of forest and uh, then there's an automatic me message like after 10 years, uh, it gives, gives the information of, of clearing a seedling stand. And now we have possibilities to create forest owners profiles based on the basic information and forest owners, forest use, and previous actions. We haven't done that yet, yet but we might might like profiling like in ten types of forest owners and and then uh, give them a customized customized service. And our 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 aim is to um, uh, that. Uh, uh, so we, if we are customizing our services, we could reach a wider range of forest owners by, uh, by customizing our information and, and uh, advice, advisory, uh, so that services are not excluding any forest owners. Uh, and uh, I think we could, with customer services, uh, the services are more inclusive, and we could improve our efficiency and uh, get more satisfied forest owners. 
And the most important thing that the customer services helps forest owners on their own decision making. The aim is to provide useful, high quality and up-to-date information to forest owners to support their own decision making based on their own, own targets.